welcome to the February episode of the Habitat Home Show. Today, we're going to be talking about our Family Services Department, the sweat equity requirements that our partner families must go through. Um, we'll be talking with our mortgage specialist who works with our families after they are in the home, as well as we'll have a special interview with one of our partner families. And then getting to the normal pieces of our episodes, we'll have the restore, We'll be describing some of the uh, trim molding doors and windows that we have in the ReStore, as well as moving into a new build after we finished up the 6700 Sandy Drive build for the Bryce family that we had followed through the first episodes. Now we're moving to our 211 Edison Drive uh, in Dayton, Ohio. And then, of course, we'll follow up and finish up with everybody's favorite part of the episode, Norm's Know How where he'll be talking about how to install a dimmer switch in your lighting. So, to begin the episode, we have um, our former volunteer director and our current family services director, David Malk here, joining me today. Um, and he's gonna talk a little bit about sweat equity and, and the requirements that our partner families go through. So welcome, David. Great, thanks Brad, glad to be here. Could you please explain to our viewers what exactly sweat equity is in the Habitat program? Sure. Um, sweat equity is, is an incredibly important part of piece of the puzzle when you're talking about becoming a partner family with Habitat for Humanity. Um, part of that partnership is that our families need to engage with Habitat for Humanity as an organization and help us by volunteering with the organization. So when we say the word sweat equity, what we're really in some ways talking about is volunteering and engaging with the organization as a whole. Um, so we have an expectation of folks that um, partner with us that they're going to perform, um, if it's a single adult household, 275 hours of sweat equity in order to become a Habitat homeowner. Or if it's a, uh, if it's a two adult family, a husband and wife, then uh, you're looking at 550 hours of sweat equity slash volunteer hours that they would need to uh, uh, complete before they're eligible to become a Habitat homeowner. Holy cow, that sounds like a lot. It definitely is. It's a, it's a big commitment um, and it's, uh, it's a lot of time. It's not something to be taken lightly. What I see from the families that are a part of our program is they have an incredible focus uh, as far as a goal of becoming a homeowner and the sweat equity is a large part of that. Many of our partner families, they're working full-time jobs throughout the week and then uh, spending their Saturdays with us uh, to volunteer and try to get through uh, that sweat equity requirement. What exactly do families do to, require, to fulfill those sweat equity requirements? Sure, um, it's, it's really neat, I think, um, when you're talking about the opportunities that we have to engage and to, uh, to get, get through your sweat equity. Um, one of the, one, I think one of the neatest opportunities is they get to help other Habitat homeowners um, and they, need, they, can, they can help by building their homes. So, uh, you know, you're in the program, you're, you're coming through our program, and you get to go out on our build sites as we're building other homes for other people and, and help out with that project. So um, I think it's exciting for our, our partner families in that sense because they get to see um, other homes being built and I can only imagine or thinking about the day when we're going to be working on their home and we're going to be you know building their their structure their new home from the ground up. Um, the other place that homeowners volunteer with us a lot is in our ReStore. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity uh, for partner families uh, to come out because it's a, the ReStore is open Tuesday through Saturday, uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., 9 to 3 on, on Saturday. And it's a great place to plug into and it's really easy to get scheduled there. And um, for folks, especially maybe when it's cold outside or the conditions aren't ideal to be in an outdoor environment, it gives them an opportunity to help our organization uh, knock out sweat equity hours, but uh, also do it in a more kind of managed environment as far as an indoor uh, retail facility. Some of the people that uh, Habitat serves are, have special needs or different abilities, let's say. Yeah, how, how, does that, how does sweat equity work for a family like that? Yeah, um, and in fact, great, great uh, example. We had, we had two women actually that um, were confined to wheelchairs that came through our program and are current partner families. You know, and sweat equity can be defined in all sorts of ways. I mean, at, at the end of the day, yeah, you're gonna have to spend that amount of time. So if it's two adults, it's 550 hours. If it's a single person, 275 hours, but you know, for the two folks that were in wheelchairs, you know, they were on site. They were engaging with our volunteers. They were, um, you know, bringing hammers to, to people or bringing tools to people at the site. 
and, and to be honest, they, they were just thanking our volunteers and being visible and, you know, bringing hot chocolate to people, what, whatever that is. We also have some opportunities sometimes um, through other departments where you can come in and help us with mailings or um, help in all kinds of different ways. But um, it, we can really define that in a number of ways. And really what we're talking about is the amount of time that you're going to spend engaging with whether it's our staff or um, engaging with our organization, but uh, it can be really done in all sorts of ways. And I think it means so much to our volunteers. Um, we, you know, we have about 3,000 volunteers a year. So for our partner families to engage with those folks, thank them, you know, be visible with them. It means a lot to those volunteers to, to see where their efforts are going and to get a chance just to even talk to our partner families and learn more about them or feel like they're lending a helping hand to those folks. And that's probably really cool from the volunteer side to really put a face or personality and a story to somebody that you're serving um, on the job site, I imagine. I, I'm sure it does. And, and I think it makes you feel really good. And like you say, kind of put a face to the name or um, have a more personal experience when you're out in, volunteering with us and, and helping with our mission to be able to put a face to that or, or see somebody that's going to be uh, a direct recipient of the volunteerism that you're giving, I, can, I think can be pretty powerful. So with the families that we serve, they're all, they all have jobs, they're very hardworking. How long does it take an average family, let's say, to complete that 275 to 550 sweat equity hours? Yeah, the, one thing I've noticed is every family's different, and so it's really about how focused and driven you are to, to complete that, 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 that sweat equity requirement. Um, I've seen some families really go through it quickly and can, can complete it in you know a year and sometimes even less. For an average family though, we're probably talking anywhere between 18 and 24 months from the time you get accepted into the program until the time when um, you're gonna finish your, your sweat equity and, and probably be moving into, into a, a Habitat for Humanity home where you're gonna be signing the mortgage and, uh, and purchasing that, that home from us. So on average, 18 to 24 months, but I've seen people do it quicker um, that are, like I said, driven and focused and, and really uh, have that goal in mind. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it sounds like I know as you try to save money for a down payment, it almost sounds like the sweat equity in some ways is that savings for the down payment on the mortgage. Um, and I don't know if that's a fair thing to say, but there is a lot to getting the time and putting the time in and mm -hmm. really being a part of that process. Yeah, there, and there's really a, a, a number of components. One is the, the overall hours, um, 275 or 550, um, you know, whether it's a single adult household or, um, you know, husband and wife or two adults. Um, the other one we do have is um, we have the savings plan, so you have to save $1,400. Um, and I know Danny's going to talk a little bit about where that money goes and specifically why it's that dollar amount. Um, the other thing that we do is uh, our, our families go through a series of classes uh, mm -hmm. focusing on different different things. Um, uh, budgeting uh, is, is a biggie. Uh, home improvements, how to do some basic repairs around around your home, how to get involved in your community. There's a, a, a number of things. So in, in, as, as our homeowners are, uh, or future homeowners are going through those classes, we do count that class time as sweat equity hours as well. So that's another component, something we think is really important. We want our homeowners to be successful. So to, to uh, have them go through the classes and hopefully gain some knowledge uh, through that process um, is hopefully setting them up, or we think it's setting them up for success when they sign the mortgage and become a, a brand new homeowner for the first time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and we're going to speak with uh, Danny Moore next, who is our mortgage specialist, and he'll give us a little more detail on how that works in the Habitat program. So. Thank you again for joining us, Dave. Thanks a lot, Brad. Really enjoyed it. Awesome. Our next guest is our mortgage specialist at Habitat for Humanity of Greater Dayton, Mr. Danny Moore. Welcome, Danny. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I, I think it's really interesting. Not a lot of people, as we go out and talk in the public or talk to um, potential partners or current partners, understand that Habitat actually is a mortgage company also. Um, can you tell me why that is or how this works a little bit? Um, well, I fully understand that because when I first started working at Habitat, I had all my family members ask me, why am I working at Habitat when I have all this mortgage experience? Mm -hmm. Well, because they didn't understand, which is a common mis misconception, is that Habitat gives away homes. Mm -hmm. But really our mission is we're a hand up, not a, not a hand out. Sure. 
So each partner family that um, goes through the process of our, you know, sweat equity hours that Dave referred to, they all actually have to sign a mortgage with us before they're able to even move into their home. Wow. And uh, what does that mortgage do then in the future as they start paying it back after they've been in the house for, you know, anywhere from a month to 15 years? Well, the great thing about it is all of the uh, payments that the homeowners make towards their mortgages, it all goes to fund future homes for our partner families that are currently still going through our process right now. Okay. So the way I like to look at it is a traditional bank, a payment that you make to them, it funds the bank. But our homeowners, their payments, it helps fund the future um, possibility of a homeowner getting a home. Oh, excellent. And I think uh, Millard Fulmer, Fuller, who is the uh, actual founder of Habitat, calls that the fund for humanity. Right. Um, right. Kind of that pay it forward aspect right, exactly. of it. That's really interesting. So having worked for a mortgage bank, and we can't mention names, right? right? Exactly. We don't want to say that. They're all great. Right. Um, uh, how is Habitat different than a mortgage bank other than, you know, the mortgages are paying for future houses versus paying for the bank? Uh, there's a variety of reasons that we're different. Um, I would say, you know, we have the same government rules and regulations that we have to follow. So that's a similarity with some exceptions. But uh, the biggest thing, biggest difference is that all of our mortgage all of our mortgages are at a 0% interest rate, which is unheard of. Wow. You know, it's all of our homeowners that sign, um, they don't pay any interest throughout the life of their loan. And also, um, throughout our guidelines, we're able to put homeowners or families into a home that otherwise might not be able to obtain a mortgage with a traditional bank. Mm. So, let's say someone that wouldn't be able to finance with one of the bigger banks in Dayton, they could go through our program and actually be able to qualify for a home. So we can help them build equity and wealth exactly. through home ownership. Exactly. And as they make their payments, they're saving thousands of dollars on what would be going towards interest. Mm -hmm. And all the while, while they're doing that, they're building equity through their homes. Um, you know, they're becoming more invested and involved in their communities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, it's just a better situation for them overall. Excellent. Cool. You know, it's interesting. I remember reading an article recently where, and I never looked at it this way, but they said, Home ownership is the tried and true American way mm -hmm. to build wealth, mm -hmm. you know, and like we've done it for since America was founded, you know, 200 and almost 50 years ago. I hope my math some, is right. Something yeah. like that. I just raised the money. I don't count it. No, I was reading an article that kind of said the same thing was that, uh, you know, people have been throwing money at poverty the wrong way. Hmm. What it really is, is giving someone a stable place to live. And that creates, you know, a better life for them and their children, which in the end will create actual more wealth for them. Excellent. Yeah. Very cool. So you're working with the partner families one on one after they've gone through all the sweat equity and, and uh, home ownership classes requirements. Uh, how important is your relationship with those partner families once they're in the home? Um, I would say it's huge, and not just my fam my uh, relationship with them, but also everyone at Habitat, really, because mm -hmm. you know at Habitat we all represent our mission when someone comes into the office. Mm -hmm. But specifically, me, I think it's vital to the success of our homeowners and ultimately the success of Habitat. I mean, uh, our homeowners they have to have someone that they can trust and confide in. So I'm involved in the upfront part of the mortgage, but also I service all the mortgages in-house, which currently we have 172. Wow. So when they need to talk to someone regarding the mortgage, whether it's just a general question or if they need help or anything, they always have me to talk to and I've made sure they're able to trust and confide in me. So that they'll come to me with issues while they're coming up as opposed to too far down the line where we can't help them. And it's funny you mentioned, and this will be my last question for you, but uh, as we come as families have issues, how does Habitat deal with that then? Because I mean, obviously you're different than a regular mortgage, or we're different than a regular mortgage mm -hmm. bank, but how do we work with families when, you know, uh, an emergency comes up in that, in that way? Well, it's really on a case by case basis, but um, we have a lot more leeway, you know, and a lot more, uh, I don't know, ways of giving assistance to our homeowners all while still holding them accountable for the monthly payments, you know, because we still need those to fund future homes. but. You know, we can help them out as far as um, mortgage mods if it's something they need or payment adjustments, payment plans, anything that can keep our homeowners in our homes because that's our ultimate goal. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Again, it's that hand up, not hand out exactly. mentality. Exactly. Cool. 
Well, Danny, I think that was a, a great explanation of mortgages and habitats uh, program. So thank you for joining this after joining us this afternoon. And, thank you for uh, having me. We appreciate the information. Cool. Next up on our episode, we'll have Ashley Reeves uh, interviewing a partner family or one of our partner family's members, Christina Day. Hello, welcome to our February edition of our Volunteer Spotlight. My name is Ashley Reeves and I am the new Volunteer Services Coordinator with Habitat for Humanity of Greater Dayton. Uh, today we're joined by Christina Day, one of our partner families here in Dayton. Uh, welcome Christina, thank you so much for agreeing to come out and talk to us today. How are thank you doing? You. Great, thanks for having me. You are so welcome, we're so lucky. Um, so I know that you are currently working as a partner family on your sweat equity hours. Uh, David kind of went into a little bit more detail earlier in the episode um, about what that entails, but we'd really like to hear about um, how you are working on your sweat equity hours. Well, I work through the week, so I come on Saturdays, um, and I've got, I've been working since the beginning of December, I believe, every Saturday in the restore, so it's been fun. Okay, what, what kind of things do you do when you're at the restore? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I have scrubbed stoves, the inside and outside. I've scrubbed refrigerators and washers and dryers, and we test everything, and we put everything on the floor, and... Um, they've had me working up in the front now too. Phil seems to like me up there with Katie, so. <laughs> I have heard that on Saturdays, you and Katie run that resource. So we We're a really, powerhouse. Uh, that's what I've heard. I've heard great reviews about that, that you guys, Phil's like, on Saturdays, Katie and Christina run this show. And I'm like, that is amazing. We're so lucky to have great we volunteers. Have, we have a great time. It's have fun. kind of figured out everything, you know, prepping, cleaning donations, mm -hmm. but then also running the front counter. Yes. I know that that is a skill we really appreciate just so that you're there to welcome the customers, help them out and all of that. Yes. Um, so have you enjoyed working at the ReStore and now you're maybe gonna move on to helping at uh, build sites here in the future or? Um, I absolutely love the ReStore. Um, I did tell Phil that once it starts to get warmer out, I was going to start working on a build. Okay. He didn't really like that idea very much. <laughs> okay, he doesn't want to lose you on Saturdays, I'm sure. But, but that is my plan. Okay. Um, I did build last year in Miami County um, and, I, and I loved it. I absolutely loved the experience. So okay. the whole thing with just volunteering and helping other people is great. I think that's amazing. I'm sure Phil would love it for you to help at the resort, but then <laughs> find some time to help at the build sites. Yes. But, you know, as we're wrapping up, uh, I do want to know what are you most looking forward to as you, you know, finish completing your sweat equity hours and, and the program as a whole? Um, of course, having a home for myself and my children is, is going to be the greatest thing because it's going to help out a lot. Um, but I also want to continue to work with other families. I've met a lot of great people, um, so I want to continue to help for as long as I can. That sounds awesome. I, you are like a partner family ambassador <laughs> for our program. So I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to come and speak with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. This month in our ReStore Focus, we want to highlight three of the items that we have in our ReStore um, that are pretty well generally heavily stocked. First of all, we have doors of all sizes and different styles for you. Um, you, have, you can come in and measure them at your will. Um, we've recently got a, a shipment of doors from Lowe's in, so we would encourage you to come check them out at 115 West Riverview Avenue in Dayton, Ohio, um, as well as we have a large inventory of pre-finished hardwood moldings. Um, they're, they're also flooring transition and stair nose in a variety of finishes. If you're planning a hardwood floor installation, you can save hundreds by getting your trim pieces at the ReStore. Um, speaking of saving money, we also have a wide variety of paint. And the paint that we sell at the Habitat ReStore is interior or exterior paint, and we sell it for $12 a gallon. So after you put up that molding around your new doors, you can actually repaint them and save quite a bit of money by utilizing the paint that you can get at the Habitat ReStore. Again, for more inventory and to see the actual ReStore itself, please come to 115 West Riverview Avenue in Dayton, Ohio, or you can check some of the stuff out on our website at www.daytonhabitat.org. If you happen to have a donation that you would like to make to the Habitat ReStore, please feel free to call 222-2296 to schedule a pickup, or you can also schedule it online now by visiting our webpage. So, Thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you at the ReStore. So this month, and going forward, we're going to focus on 213 Edison Street in Dayton, Ohio. This is a home that we've just started for a single mother. 
Uh, currently, we have the foundation poured, we have installed the floor system, and we are currently framing some of the walls. About half of the walls are up right now for the exterior, and we will continue to frame those going forward. We encourage any and all volunteers to come out to our web or come to our job sites. And in order to volunteer, you can go to our webpage at www.daytonhabitat.org and click the volunteer button on the home page. This will give you a list of all of our vol volunteer opportunities, whether it be on a build or in our restore. So we look forward to following the progress of the 213 Edison Street build and we look forward to seeing you out on the job site volunteering with us. And welcome back to the Habitat Home Show. Uh, now it's time for everybody's favorite portion of this episode or episodes in general, Norm's Know How. So I have with me again uh, Norm Yozzi, our Director of Operations, who's going to show you how to install a dimmer switch in your house. Maybe a little late for Valentine's Day, but for next year, if you want to set the mood, Norm can help you. All right. Thank you, Brad. And then, so today, uh, like I say, dimmer switches are something, of course, that can save energy. Uh, they also can help adjust the light. You know, like I say, my wife does like to dim the lights, you know, for dinner or something like that. But it's really a fairly easy switch for most, uh, for most homes. Um, first of all, I want to say that if you're not, not comfortable at all with electric or electrical, uh, you know, devices or electricity, of course, the best tool that you could do is actually pick up the phone, and any elect electrical contractor could do this for you. But I think it's a pretty safe and easy um, switch to do, so let me show you how it works. So there's different kinds of dimmer switches, and there are some with dials, there are some with uh, little slides on them, and others that the, the uh, control is actually done just with something that looks like a regular switch. Um, some of them are intentionally made for fans, uh, you do want to check to make sure that you get one for the kind of lighting that you have. So this one is for incandescent lighting. And if you notice that basically on the switch, you actually have a number of different wires. Some of them, like this one, are set up so that you can use it for a three-way switch, which means if you have two separate switches that control the, the uh, device, the light, and some are just made for a regular two-way, but they all can be used, uh, like I say, on a two-way switch. So the first thing that you would do is Come up to your old switch, uh, remove the cover plate, and that's usually just two screws. And once I get that off. And this is after shutting off the breaker though, right? Thank you, Brad. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the very first thing that you want to do is, is check to make sure the power is off to the switch. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, the easiest way, if you have breakers or if you have fuses, is to turn the light on. And then when you go to your switch panel, and you turn the breaker off, of course, if you come back and the light is off to your, uh, the, the light that you're going to be working on, you know that there's no power to that, to that switch. Um, of course, if your box is labeled, that just makes it easier. But once the power is off, uh, there's two screws that hold the switch in place that are actually on your uh, wall. And you take those off. And then when you pull the switch out, it ought to look something like this. This wire actually uh, was here, but, but same kind of thing. There'll be two usually black wires. One of them brings the power in, and the other one brings the, lets the power go up to the light. So if you remove these two wires, and for safety's sake, keep them apart. Don't touch the wires to each other. Um, again, if your power's off, there's really sh there shouldn't be any risk of, uh, of a spark or shock. But if your power is not completely off, just keeping the wires apart will keep you safe. Third wire here is a ground wire, and that actually is what same thing protects you against uh, shocks um, if you did happen to touch the two together. So with the new switch like this, you have the two black wires and you have a ground wire. If you take the ground wire and the green wire, and you have your wire connector. Basically push the two wires into the connector and then as you turn the connector the wires wind up inside the connector and then just keep it so they're secure. Same thing, the two black wires then they just hook one to the other. Some, nine times out of ten it doesn't matter which wire you hook to which. On some dimmer switches there is something called a load and the load actually goes to the light, 
and then the the hot lead or the um, Brad, you can help me out here. Line. The line is actually where the power comes in, and a lot of times you can tell inside the box which is which because the load nine times out of ten goes up through the top of the box, and then the line comes actually in sometimes from the bottom, sometimes it's from the um, from the top also. But once you get those two wires hooked up. The other wires, if they're like this and protected, you really don't have to do anything to them. If they're bare wires, you'd want to actually put a connector on them just to protect them, and then you could always tape that with electrical tape. But once you have your two black wires hooked up and your ground wire hooked up, you simply work the wires back into the box. Kind of push those back in. This is easier to do on a wall. And then once you, once you put your, your switch back in, of course, you hook the plate up, and then your dimmer switch, you just operate, should operate like normal. So you'll be able to save energy. Of course, um, like I say, dim the lights to create different lighting effects, and that's it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Norm. I think mm -hmm. that's a great tip, and uh, I'm sure there'll be many dining experiences will, that'll be enhanced in the future in houses around Green and Montgomery County, thanks to this tip. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> and uh, if anybody else has any tips or anything they'd like to know, uh, how to do, we would love to hear from you. Uh, you can email me at normsknowhow at daytonhabitat.org. And just like I spelled all one word, no dots or no, you know, no separations. And uh, like I say, thank you, Brad. Yeah. And thank you for joining us for another episode of the Habitat Home Show. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. And again, please feel free to reach out to Norm at normsknowhow.daytonhab or at daytonhabitat.org. Next month, we have another great episode uh, lined up for you where we're going to be doing an employee spotlight of somebody in our family services department, Marsha Martin, as well as highlighting some more of the Edison Drive uh, house that you saw earlier. And then also another tip from Norm, I think next month is installing flooring, right? Correct. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.